One of the things people who are new to QLab have a hard time understanding is the fade in of a Q. So I'm going to walk quickly through uh, the logic of fading in uh, an audio Q. It works the same for video, only in video we're talking about opacity um, or transmission uh, is the term that's used. But uh, in audio we'll be taking a look at how to fade a Q in over a number of seconds. So First of all, uh, just a quick little reminder here, there's some uh, lovely sounds that you can grab if you go to your Macintosh hard drive, and then to library, and then to audio, and then to Apple loops, and then in Apple, uh, you've got the GarageBand loops, the sound effects, and the iLife sound effects. Is You should have at least the GarageBand and the Final Cut Pro sound effects, which gives you tons and tons. Uh, the other thing to remember is if you're sitting on one of these, because it's very hard to search through them, of course you can do searches, but if you're sitting on them you just want to listen to them quickly, uh, what you can do is just hit the space bar and it will play in, uh, in the preview. And if you just want to go to the next one, you just hit the down arrow and the next one will play. Alright, so I'm going to go with this club dance beat for my demo. Maybe I'll turn up the volume a little bit on the machine so you can hear it a little better. And I can drag this in. Of course I can also search for targets. Once, If I just bring in uh, an audio cue, I can, because it says there's no uh, invalid audio file, there's nothing associated with it, I can hit target and I can search for a cue in this way as well. Getting rid of a queue is also an odd one. They don't want you to be able to hit delete and accidentally delete a queue. So uh, there are two ways to do it. You can go up under um, the menu and hit delete or go uh, Apple uh, delete and that will do it for you. So here I'm going to just hit command delete and it's gone. And now I have my queue in QLab, uh, my sound queue, and I have to make sure that the little active arrow is here and then I hit go and it plays. Escape will stop everything that's playing. Everything, all, all cues in QLab will stop when you hit the escape button. Um, so, one more time, you have to have this little gray arrow that says what's going to happen when you hit go or when you hit the space bar. So one more time, and it plays right away. Escape. All right, so that's great. So now the uh, choreographer or the, design, or the director turns to you and says, well, I like that, but I don't like the way it bangs right in. I want that fade up over, let's say in this case, over uh, four seconds. So we bring in a fade cue. And first thing that QLab will do for you is it will tell you what's why it's not functioning yet. So it's not functioning because it doesn't have a target cue. So you have to tell it what it's going to fade. And you do that by just dragging the uh, audio cue onto the fade. Now you'll see that it's changed its name to Fade Club Dance Beat. But it can do fade ups and fade downs. So if we were going to fade it down, we would go into levels and we would activate these at the low level here and that would uh, fade it down over a time of five seconds to um, uh, infinite, negative infinite. So taking it all the way out just a brief explanation on why I'm saying negative infinite instead of, or infinite negative instead of zero and that's because in the world of audio uh, zero is actually nominal. I'm going to press the option button which is a quick way to move around here and notice if I set it uh, click option and click it says zero and in the world of audio zero means it's going to play at the level that it was recorded at. Um, so this is infinite negative or negative or, or negative infinite and uh, if I click again it's back up and now if I run it up it's going to go plus in decibels or below the uh, zero in negative in decibels and it actually is going to go all the way down to negative 60 which for our purposes is considered to be no sound getting through. All right so what I would do if this was going to be a fade out, I would set this like this, and then I would run this, I'd say go, and standing by on the fade out, and go, 
and it fades it out uh, over the five seconds. Nice and simple. A fade up, on the other hand, though, we are going to want it to play at its recorded level. So if I hit option again and click, oh, this is the master channel and this is the stereo left and the stereo right out, which I can pan between channels here. Uh, so I put all three up at nominal, and because that's what I want it to play at. And if I hit go, well, we know that it's just going to go. So obviously we don't want it to start playing at, uh, at nominal level. We want it to start playing at um, infinite negative. So if I go to levels here on the, fir on the actual audio cue itself, and then I hit option and take these down to, uh, to infinite negative, and the other thing I don't want to do is hit go twice. I don't want to hit go because now I'm wasting some of the song. I want it to fade up as soon as I hit go on this cue. I want it to start fading up over five seconds. So I go here and I put an auto follow on it. And this kind of auto follow says that it will fade as soon as it go. It, it will sorry. It will go into the next cue as soon as I hit go here. There are two types. The other one with the paddle says that it will wait until the end of the cue and then go into the next cue. These are the kind of auto follows you would do if you wanted one sound cue to follow another. Um, notice that it's put a post weight in here of the exact time in seconds and hundreds of a second of uh, the sound itself. And if I played it, it would count down this post weight and then go to the next cue. But I don't want that. I want it to immediately go into the fade up. Now if I hit go, fades up over five seconds. Now notice that one other thing uh, with that fade up is that I didn't hear it for a few seconds and that's because the default curve shape in uh, QLab has this sort of dead start to the curve shape. This is our five seconds uh, fade but for the first second and a half, almost two seconds, we're not going to hear a lot coming out of this cue. Uh, so we can change that by going to a custom curve and I can actually force the issue the other way a bit. I can have it pop up so almost as soon as I hit go I'm going to start up around this thir uh, negative 34 decibels and coming up to its, uh, I guess this is not in decibel, it's in percentage. So it's going to come right up, shoot right up to about 30 and then slower from there of its total fade. Uh, so now uh, if I was, uh, were to hit go on here Here, how much sooner that came in on the five second fade. Okay, so that's how to do a fade up and that works the same whether it's in audio or in video, although um, if you have a, um, well I won't get into video right now. Uh, the other thing I want to say is that if I put a fade out on a cue, uh, so I have a fade here and I'm going to fade this out, uh, this dance cue, let's suppose I'm going to put uh, a loop on here so that it's going to fade up over five seconds and then just continue to loop. If I turn around and I put, notice that I've got a, a fade here and now I'm going to uh, sit on this cue and it tells me, well it's going to be stubborn and not tell me, but I know I have to associate it with a cue so it's going to fade the club beat and I'm going to activate these levels at zero, sorry, at uh, negative infinity and now I should be able to fade it out over a five second call. And now I hit go, it fades up over five seconds. Notice the cue itself is going to get to the end and automatically loop. It's going to continue to play this beat as long as I want it to. And I want it to fade, I'm standing by on the fade and go fades out and it's, we can't hear it anymore but notice that it's still playing. So this is a deadly thing in QLab because you, are, you can have audio cues and video cues running in the background that you don't see or hear because you've faded them but they continue to run. This consumes resources and eventually QLab, if you have enough of those running, will start to glitch on you. 
Um, so what we want to do on all of our fade out cues is to select this little box, stop target when done. And notice what happens to the name of it when I click on this. If it's a fade out, it will fade and stop. All right, so now I'm going to just hit escape to stop this. If I go back to the beginning here and I hit go, it fades up. And it's continuing to loop, and I'm standing by on the fade out and hitting the space bar for go. It's fading down, and it stops running. Now, the way that also that uh, it's a, uh, a good habit to get into is when you're running queues is to open the queue list and active queue window. So over here in active queues. So there are two tabs here, queue lists, where you can create different queue lists and select from them. And here is active queues. Um, in the active queues, I can turn around and uh, watch what's happening with queue lab. So when I hit go, you can see that the, the audio queue is running and the fade queue is running. That drops off as soon as it's finished fading. This is going to continue to loop here until I hit go. And now it's fading. And once it gets to its five second fade, it's going to stop both and now no queues are running. So it's a good habit to get into to have this window open so you can see what's happening with QLab. And that way you'll see if you have queues that are faded but continuing to run in the background. Cheers.